At the top of the Coquihalla Pass in British Columbia is a set of majestic mountains like nowhere else on earth. Crawling on the side of a cliff. Gnarly death drop. Good morning. We're gonna head up there. I'll tell you more on the way because it's noisy here. The goal for the hike is to reach the needle, a peak that's often used as a benchmark, test themselves to see really what their level's at. Often when I start these hikes, I really have no idea if I have any business being on these mountains, but there's only one way to find out. All right, so we've got away from the traffic now. This is Needle Peak. Uh, it's very steep, as you can see. It's a real butt kicker right off the jump here. The trail follows a ridge line where it makes a fork in the road, left going up Needle Peak and right going up Flatiron. Needle Peak has two cruxes, a steep climb getting onto the upper ridge and the final summit block. So I just busted up into the Alpine. Look at this, Yak Peak. I've got a full video on that one if you want to check that out. It's a little bit different. Yak Peak's trail is more steep and a little more rough. This one is a big, wide trail, really steep though, but you know, rooty. Going through there, that's the end of the Alpine. After that, it's just gonna be all open, exposed to the sun. So right in the center there is Vacuna and Guanaco, I believe it's called. And that is at the top of my to-do list for hiking. It scares the crap out of me looking at it. That steep edge that slopes up the shark fin, there's a chain that goes up there. It is possible to get up there. It looks terrifying. I don't know if I'm ready for that one yet. There she is, Needle Peak. That's where we're going today. All right, so I just hit snow, which is nice. The air is blowing the cold off the snow. And also, uh, it said 40% chance of thunderstorms, and it's kind of holding at 40%. It's not, there hasn't been a drop of rain, so it's just made it a lot cooler. So it's kind of risk reward here. I'm getting nice weather, it might rain. Mountains of the Coquihalla summit are like no other. They're formed over millions of years as marine sediment, sand, silt, and clay, which transformed into sedimentary rock from the immense heat and pressure applied to them. As tectonic plates collided and lifted these mountains into the air, they were folded and sculpted by wind, erosion, rivers, and glaciers, resulting in the impressive mountains we see today. Sun's starting to come out again. And the views up here, wow, wow. It's on all trails, there's a there's a loop that goes kind of all the way down there. It goes up this ridge, up onto that peak. I think there's actually two peaks. Yeah, there's another one. You go down that slope there, up this slope, and then up to Needle Peak. Now you got to be careful with all trails because people have said there's class five there. That's rock climbing. It looks like oh, you just go for a nice hike. That is not a nice hike. But that piece of rock right there, look at that. Absolutely incredible. Look how the sun is just kissing the right side of the ridges there. 
I mean, look at this entire mountain range. These are some of the best mountains I've ever seen. Look at this. Just like there's a big camel hump one over there too. That one uh, towers over top of uh, Chilliwack Basin. And I think this one is called uh, Flatiron. Wow, just wow. This is so good up here, so good. One thing that's also amazing is the amount of mosquitoes. There's an all trails review said that it was tons of mosquitoes, even in the hot sun, it's true. Um, the wind is just blown in a little bit, so they've kind of pushed them out for the time being, but man, I've been getting eaten alive. So this looks like it could be a crocs, it looks pretty darn steep, so I'm a little nervous there. And then I know the crocs from reading is up there on that spot. This first one here, yeah, I'm definitely a little nervous, but we'll see. I know how the trails can kind of noodle through the rocks and it's not that bad. So we'll just get close to it and see what it looks like. Well, this does look scary. I do see a ledge right up there and across that I could scramble up. I'm curious how this goes up. Oh man, baby. You can see the repeater up there for flat iron. trail through here. Oh, it's a cliff head trail. It does, the mosquitoes aren't helping, huh? Just want to take a look where you guys are looking at there. Oh yeah, it's still a little block there, huh? Oh, God, he's a thing, right? What goes up must come down. That's not a fun one to come down, oh no. no not I can get, get, get up? up this like a climber, but there's no but down. then there's no down. That's my only like Did you go over here? I I did go that way. Not from here, but from down there. And then I couldn't see where to go after that. Because well, that's where I was. So I went up through there, and then that rock there, I couldn't see. Oh. If I can, you go over that one. See, like that. One. Yeah. Right all right. Let's check all three of these. Standing on a single piece of angled rock, we tried to figure out which way was the intended trail and the safest route, as it was all our first time being up there. There appeared to be three routes. The first being the cliff walk on the open wall. The second being the nose, the sharp rock sticking out in the middle, with exposure dropping down to the root, you climb up to it, and potentially a third root on the other side. I put the drone in the air to hopefully find the easiest route. The drone showed a potential route with the dirt between the rocks, but upon getting her eyes on it, it was far too steep to climb without ropes. Stuck trying to get up this crux. One wall's got a big exposed rock wall. 
This one is a big uh, rock wall that you have to climb through. Oh, let's take you guys through here. The other one's really exposed though, which I'm assuming this one is too. Okay, we've enacted baby mode. Nothing like crawling on the side of a cliff. Whew. Unfortunately, the trees end here. Oh man. So you see here, it's not that challenging, but there's a death drop, gnarly death drop. Okay. Oh. So there's, I started to get weak knees there. Uh, there's a death drop with like a little pinch and just the thought of going down that, there's no way I'd be able to get down that. I would, I would freeze and then I have to try getting down this thing and then I'd probably have to call the choppa. So I don't want to be doing that. So I don't know, I may have to make a call here or go over to Flatiron instead, which isn't, uh, that's not a bad idea. You can see here, the death drop is right up there. You see a little branch on the outside, no thank you. So a little recap, that's some, ex some serious exposed class four. Uh, it didn't look like it was that far, it was maybe 10, 20 meters maybe of exposed class four. And I could have gone up, but I couldn't have gotten down. Looking down the death drop, a ledge that you actually have to step over, it comes to a pinch on the wall where it's literally like millimeters thick. And then you have to climb, like step over that. There's no trees, no nothing, all three of us. I met these two up on there and they were all frozen there too. The other option is to climb up the the rock nose, but on the way down, there's no way to like, you have to belly flop yourself down to get off of there. It's just, they really need a chain at that one spot and then it would be very doable. So this is a new objective here, flat iron. Another big peak, but this one looks a little bit more manageable than the needle. Check this out, there's a like ice blue glacier thing down there. Looks so cool. I've never been bitten by so many mosquitoes on a mountain in my life. Standing up on that scramble there, there's literally like a hundred mosquitoes eating away and it's like you're trying to focus and you're getting eaten alive. Another level of hiking. There's no complaints here though, look at this. Flat iron is incredible. All these mountains around here are incredible. There's two routes, there's this one that goes on the ridge and then there's one that's an inside route which is a little safer. heading into the majestic bowl of the flat iron and it's starting to rain here a little bit you can see the needle behind me there man that thing is crazy I'm not sure if I'd been able to get up the top section there some YouTube videos show it's not that bad but I don't know
heading up the final summit block. You see our friends up there from before? So the scramble up to a flat iron here is uh, you kind of choose your own adventure. There's no real trail. There's a whole bunch of kind of traily paths people have gone, but you just kind of find your own route up. Wow, look at this. So after losing about three liters of blood to the mosquitoes, it's time to walk around. There's a big summit up here. Just going to do a little bit of exploring. So on the top of Flatiron here, we've got a big uh, dingle dongle. This one's got solar panels though, fancy. Possible coordinates there. It suddenly got extremely hot. Oh, it's brutal. This is a really fun summit. There's all sorts of views on every angle including this one of the lake down here. Time to head down. This is the tarn on Flatiron. Beautiful, except for the thousand mosquitoes per square inch. Go start in the sand, yeah. Yeah, your diaphragm just stops working at a point. <laughs> yes. That felt absolutely incredible. Nice and cool now. We jumped in there and got a nice 10 second <laughs> dip.
heading back down now. And then I gotta decide where I wanna sleep. If I wanna sleep up here, Coco Hall is nice and cool, or do I drive somewhere which I'll end up lower, further on but warmer. Coming up from Flatiron there, after all this hiking, it's kind of soul destroying. So tiring, it's so hot out here. Even after the swim, I'm feeling so hot and dry. I don't know how that's possible. Yeah, these definitely look like uh, smashed cornices. Yeah. I'm absolutely gutted. So I have a, ba a power bank underneath my seat here called EcoFlow River Pro. It's 720 watt hours. It allows me to charge all my my drone, my laptop, my cameras, this camera I'm using, all my other cameras thing kind of popped in the machine and it's basically bricked, basically useless. Unbelievable after all this and setting up the solar panel, all this stuff, like there's so much, you look at my build video that there's so much work into that and getting adapters and all these different things and to have that thing just pop on the first day is just unbelievable. So I sent them an email and we'll see what they, they say. Luckily, so keep in mind for all you van lifers out there, having redundancies of very important things. I've got like an inverter thing which goes into my cigarette lighter of my car, which has one plug. And I'm able to plug in my laptop in that. So as long as I'm running my car, just sitting here idling, I can turn on my laptop. So I just dumped all my footage by doing that. Filming videos and, and trying to make a name for myself. And it's just like the most important piece of gear aside from my vehicle itself like pops i guess maybe my camera camera this camera here i'm holding is more important but we'll see what happens with this road trip stay tuned <laughs> my life here's a disaster as usual